Let's just review some of the tools that are in your toolbox, like arithmetic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We have other tools like least common multiple that we use for making common denominators when adding fractions or rational expressions. Greatest common factor we will use. That's the first step in factoring. We have our distributive property of multiplication over addition and subtraction. Factoring trinomials, binomials, rules of exponents, polynomial and algebraic expressions, which is what we'll be working with mostly. So in arithmetic operations, we have our addition and subtraction that undo each other. Do you remember that? And then we have multiplication and division, which also undo each other. So they are inverse operations of each other. We also have connections between addition, multiplication, subtraction, division. Addition is combining like units. Multiplication is repeated addition. We can also use combining like units for subtraction and repeated subtraction for division. These are how the operations connect to each other. So let me ask you this. What does it mean to compare two quantities? Think about that. If I gave you two quantities, how do you compare? Again, they have to be like units. Otherwise, you can't really tell which one is bigger or smaller or equal. What about the word equal, greater, less than, greater than? What do they mean? Or less equals? So just take a little time and think about what these terminologies mean to you. We're now ready to embark on a journey of equations and inequalities. So an equation is a statement asserting equality of two objects, whereas an inequality is a statement asserting inequality of two mathematical objects. What does that mean? That means if I say x is equal to 2, x is a polynomial, 2 is a real number, and I'm saying that the algebraic quantity x is equal to the real number 2. If I were to say x is smaller than 2, that would be an inequality. So the notation that we're going to use is the equal to sign is going to signify left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. And the symbols less than, greater than, less equals, greater equals will be used to signify inequalities. Let's take a look at some examples then. We will do equations and inequalities simultaneously. For example, 2x plus 4 equals 3 is an equation. If you just replace the equal to sign with the less than sign, then it becomes an inequality. This is equation in one variable or inequality in one variable, and the variable here happens to be x. If you look at 2 thirds x, minus 3 equals 5 over x plus 2. That's an equation in one variable. Whereas if you replace the equal to sign with greater than or equal to sign becomes an inequality. So the first equation and inequality are called linear equation or inequality linear because you have a degree 1 polynomial. The second equation has a denominator of x. So this would be a rational equation. Let's do some more examples. y equals 3x plus 1 over 2x minus 3 will be an equation in two variables, whereas the same thing but with a greater than sign would be an inequality in two variables. Pause the video here and see if you can come up with examples of equations and inequalities. Go ahead. Let's see some more examples. So quadratic would be if you're using second degree polynomial or second degree inequality. When you use square roots, that would be a radical equation containing a radical. And now look, we don't have to use the variable x. We can use variable t, you can use r, s, whichever variable you prefer. Here's a rational inequality and equation in variable u, so but again, one variable, equation or inequality. And let's see one more, absolute value equation and inequality with the variable r.
So the symbols used for inequations and inequalities are as follows. We say A is equal to B. That means that this object is equaling this object. If we use the A and this symbol, that means A is smaller than B. Always remember that this open, you can think of it as a mouth. The mouth always opens to a bigger quantity. So A is smaller than B, or B is bigger than A. That's how you can read that. This would be A is bigger than B, or B is smaller than A. A is less than or equal to B. So we're saying A can be smaller than B, or it can be equal to B. That's what this little bar on the bottom means, less than or equal to. And this would be A is greater than or equal to B. So A can be bigger than B, or you're allowing for the possibility for A to be equaling B. So any number when substituted for the variable in the original equation or inequality that gives us a true statement is called a solution to that equation or inequality. The process in which we use mathematical properties of equality or inequality respectively to isolate the variable by itself is called solving the equation or inequality. So for example, if x equals 3, if we take x equals 3, put it in this equation, look what we get. So we're substituting. 2 times 3 is minus 5. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. And 1 is equaling 1. So x equals 3 makes this statement a true statement, which means that 3 is x equals 3 is a solution to this equation. Try x equals 5. 2 times 5, 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 is not equal to 1. So 5 make this statement false. So 5 would not be a solution to this equation. Let's try x equals 2 in this inequality. 2 times 2, which is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And negative 1 is smaller than 3. So x equals 2 is a solution of this inequality. Let's try x equals 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 is smaller than 3. So 0 is another solution. So you can see there doesn't just have to be one solution. There can be lots, in infinitely many solutions to a inequality. So what about x equals 6? 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. 7 is not less than 3. So that would not be a solution to this inequality. So 6, x equals 6 is not a solution to the inequality, but 2 was, 0 was, and there are many others. So solving an equation or inequality, you can think of it as untying a knot or undoing what was done to the variable to get into that location. And another way to think of it would be the reverse order of operations. You're trying to undoing algebraic operations means you are uh, doing the opposite of order of operations to get to the variable. So let's take a look and see how we can learn to undo our order of operations. We know that the tools we have are parentheses, base to the power exponent, multiplication division, addition, subtraction, Maybe radicals, absolute value. So there's a whole bunch of things. So reading convention for us was read left to right. Parentheses come first, exponents next. Multiplication division hierarchy is the same, except for you do whichever one appears first, left to right. Then addition, subtraction on the same hierarchy, depending on which one you read first, left to right. So in order to undo, will have to go in the opposite direction. So whichever quantity happened the last, you will undo that first. So we will undo subtraction and addition, whichever comes first, then division, multiplication on the same level, exponents next, and then parentheses. Radicals and absolute values, you will also treat the same way you would parentheses. So that's pretty much the foundation of solving equations and inequalities. Let's do concrete examples then in a little bit. So first, there are different kinds of equations. 
Our equation, which is true for all values of the variable, is called an identity. So for example, x times x equals x squared is an identity, because no matter what number you put in here, like 2 times 2 is 2 squared, because 4 equals 4. Any number you put in here, this is always going to be a true equation. So this is an identity, an equation in which you end up with a false statement no matter what value of the variable you put in is said to have no solution. So for example, let's try x plus 1 equals x. No matter what x value I pick and I add a 1 to it, I'm always going to get a number that's 1 bigger. I'm never going to get the original solution no matter what I do. So therefore, this equation is basically not going to have a solution. So I will have to say no solution. No real number satisfies this property. So certain tools that we'll be using for isolating the variables can sometimes lead to values of the variable that make the equation false. This mostly happens when you undo squares. Uh, this mostly happens when you undo square roots or if you undo denominators. Such a solution is called an extraneous solution. So we need to watch out for these false solutions whenever we do one of these, um, whenever we encounter one of these principles. So let's take a look and see what restrictions or extraneous solutions mean further. You will see more of it when we actually do examples. But just to make our point, Here's our equation 2 over x minus 1 plus 5 equals 2x over x minus 1 plus 7. Suppose we want to know how to solve this equation. Even before we know that, we can create an equivalent equation by multiplying both sides by x minus 1. And then you will end up with 2 plus 5x minus 5 equals 2x plus 7x minus 7. The reason we got that is because this x minus 1 in the second equation over x minus 1 will reduce by division. The same thing happens in the first term on the right-hand side. So that's how we get. And then using distributive property of multiplication over subtraction. So now look, what if I substitute x equals 1 in this third equation? I will end up with 2 plus 5 minus 5 or 2. 2 plus 7 minus 7, which is 2. So 2 is equal to 2, which means x equals 1 is a solution to this third equation for sure. Does that automatically mean it's a solution to the first equation? The answer is no, because when you're looking for a solution, you're looking for a number or numbers from the set of real numbers that make the first equation a true statement. But if you look at x equals 1, it makes the denominator 0, which we cannot have. It makes the quantity undefined, because rational number's denominator has to be non-zero. So even though x equals 1 worked on the third equation, and we got that third equation by manipulating that original equation, x equals 1 is not a solution to that first equation. Such a solution is called an extraneous solution. So x equals 1 worked for the third equation, but does not really work at the original equation. That is called an extraneous solution. So it's always important to, when you solve equations, to keep note of what the restrictions are in the pool of real numbers that you are looking at. In this particular case, we know x cannot equal 1. So if we got 1 as a solution from whatever process of equation solving or inequality solving we did, we will know that x equals 1 is an extraneous solution, which means we got it, but it does not really work for the original equation. And so, for example, if you had 2 over x plus 3x equals 3 minus x, automatically we will know that for the possible pool of solutions, we will have to discard x equals 0, because that will make the first quantity be undefined. If you had square root 2 minus x equals 5 equation, you can automatically discard any number that any real number greater than 2, because otherwise you will have a negative number inside the square root, which we know will not be a real number. So 
Solving equations and inequalities will require us to isolate the variables. So for example, if you had x and it was transformed, when you do something to it, it's called transformation. And what are we doing? We are adding a 2 to it. If you transform the original x to x plus 2, how do we recover it back? What do you think we should do? Good. We should subtract a 2, and then we'll recover our x back. What if you have our original x and it got transformed into x minus 2? How do we get it back to x? We will have to do the inverse process or inverse operation of subtraction, which would be addition. So we add a 2. What if you had x and it was transformed to 2 times x? Well, then we would have to divide by 2 because the inverse operation of multiplication is division. If you had transformed x into x divided by 2, then you would have to multiply by 2 to get x back. So you do the next one. Suppose I had x and it got transformed to 2 times x plus 3 over 5 plus 7. How would you undo it to get x back? So go ahead, pause the video, and on your own, see how you can recover the x back. You do not have to do it all at once. You can do it term by term. Assuming you've come back, let's take a look. What's the last thing we did? You undo that first. Then you go to the second last thing, and then so on. One thing at a time. So we have, last thing we did was add 7, so we will subtract a 7. OK, once we did that, then we have 2 fifths times. So we'll have to undo that by multiplying by its reciprocal, so 5 halves times. Then we have the plus 3, so we'll have to undo that. Then we'll recover the x back. So sometimes it might take a multi-stage process to recover our x back. Let's talk about the additive and multiplicative properties of equalities and inequalities. So let's just look at a number line. Let's say x equals 4 is right there. Let's say I add plus 2 on both sides of the equation. We know that adding a 2 means you're going to move 2 units to the right. So let's add 2 and shift 2 units to the right. And since we added 2 to the x and the 4, both x and 4 that were sitting on this tick mark are now sitting 2 units away, but they're both sitting on the same tick mark again. This is a tick mark where x plus 2 is sitting, and also 4 plus 2 or 6 is sitting. And they're both 2 units away from this tick mark. What do you think will happen if you subtract a 2 from both sides? Do you think we'll still get something similar? So look. If you subtract a 2 from the 4, you'll go 2 units to the left. And you'll also have 2 units to the left for x minus 2. And again, they're both sitting on the same tick mark. What does that tell you? That if you added a 2 to both sides of this equation, you have another equation. Same thing if you subtract a 2 from both sides, you have another e equation. These three equations are equivalent to each other. And they were all derived from the equation x equals 4. So in general, then, if you look at x equals 4 and you add a plus c to both sides, it will still remain an equation. So if you have x equals 4 and I add a plus c, and c is positive, then I'll be c units to the right of this tick mark. And they'll still be sitting on the same tick mark. So x plus c is equal to 4 plus c. Similarly, if you subtract a c, you'll be moving c units to the left. And again, x minus c would equal 4 minus c. They're sitting on the same tick mark. So think of additive property as follows. If you add or subtract a constant from both sides of the equation, you get another equivalent equation. So let's take a look and see what happens if you have an inequality. So now let's take a look at x less than 4. So on the number line, that means that x sits somewhere to the left of 4. So let's say it sits here. 
Let's add 2 to both x and 4 and see what happens to the tick marks. We already saw from before that adding a 2 to x means it will move 2 units to the right. Adding a 2 to the 4 means it will move 2 units to the right. So if I add 5, then it's going to go 5 units to the right. But look at where x plus 5 is relative to 4 plus 5. When you add a 5, the relative positions of x plus 5 is still to the left of 4 plus 5. Can you see that? So that means that if you add a number on both sides of an inequality, it preserves the inequality. Preserve means if x is to the left of 4, then x plus 5 is to the left of 4 plus 5. Similarly, if you subtract, same thing happens and x minus 5 is to the left of 4 minus 5. So again, the inequality is preserved. So it looks like we could add or subtract a number on both sides of the inequality as long as it's the same number added or subtracted from both sides of the inequality. The inequality is preserved, just like the equation was preserved. So in general, if I were to add c units, c is positive. I'll have x plus c is to the left of 4 plus c, and x minus c is to the left of 4 minus c. So again, the inequality is preserved if you add or subtract the same constant from both sides of the inequality. Same thing will happen if you have equations. So both for equations and inequalities, you can add or subtract the same number from both sides and preserve it. So let's write that down formally then. You can add or subtract the same number on both sides of an inequality or an equation and preserve it. So that means if I start with a equaling b, then a plus c equals b plus c, and also a minus c equals b minus c. Similarly, if you have a less than b, then a plus c smaller than b plus c, a minus c smaller than b minus c, and so on. Remember what this symbol means, greater equals. All of the inequalities are preserved as long as what? You add number on both sides, the same number, or subtract the same number. So if it's an equation, it will remain equation. If it's an inequality, it will remain an inequality of the same type. All right, pause the video here, and let's see if you can isolate the variable by itself and then also in your head, always think about what process you use to do that. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. So here you want to isolate x by itself. And whether it's an equation or inequality, we saw that we can add or subtract from both sides the same quantity and maintain its status. So if it's equal, it will remain equal. Greater will remain greater, less will remain less than, less equals, greater equals will be maintained or preserved as long as you add or subtract the same quantity from both sides. So go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Oh, you're done already? All right, let's take a look. So we have x plus 3 equals 8, so this first one. So to isolate x, we'll have to undo the plus 3. Well, how do we do that? We will have to subtract 3 on both sides. OK, once we did that, we are left with x equals 5. Look at that. We just solved the equation by simply isolating the x. Same thing will happen when you do inequality, subtract 3 from both sides, and you will end up with x greater than 5. Next one. Add 3 because it's subtract 3. So to undo subtract 3, we'll have to add 3. And we'll end up with x equals 11. For the inequality, we'll end up with x less than 11. If you take a look at this next one, we'll have to take away the 5x because we want to collect all like terms on one side because that'll make it easier to isolate. So we have x equals 6. And same thing will happen here. So whether it's a number that you add or subtract or a variable term you add or subtract, it will maintain or preserve the equality or inequality. All right, let's see how multiplication affects equalities and inequalities. So we have here negative 2 is smaller than 4. You can see how negative 2 is to the left of 4. What do you think 
happens if you multiply both sides by, say, 3? Well, let's take a look. We're going to multiply both sides by 3, so negative 2 went to sit at negative 6, and 4 went on to become 12. So look at what happened to these two. They got stretched by a factor of 3. Like from here to here is a factor of 3, from here to here is a factor of 3. So you can see, what about the inequality between negative 6 and 12? Well, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and 3 times 4 is 12, and negative 6 is still smaller than 12. In fact, negative 6 is much, much smaller than 12 than negative 2 and 4. So you can see that the inequality is still preserved when you multiply both sides by the number 3. So if you have something smaller than another object and you multiply both sides by a positive 3, what happens? Same thing. The inequality, if it's less than, will remain less than. If it's greater than, will remain greater than. Of course, the next question would be what? Multiply by? Can you think of what we should investigate next? Multiply by a negative 3. So let's multiply by negative 3 and see what happens. So we have negative 2 is smaller than 4. So look what happens. Whoa. What just happened there? Let's do it again. Look at that. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. So instead of negative 2 going left, it went to the right. And 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and it went to the left instead of going to the right. So watch again. Look at that. So do you think this is preserved or not? Well, no, because 12 is negative 12 is here and 6 is here. So 6 is bigger than negative 12. So negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. But 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So this less than symbol does not work. You have to flip it. So multiplying by a negative number on both sides changes the inequality. It does not preserve it anymore. All right, let's make our observations then. So multiplying or dividing an equation by a non-zero number preserves the equality. So I can take an equation, multiply both sides by a number, or divide both sides by a number. It will preserve the equality. But when you're working with inequalities, what happens? If you multiply both sides of an inequality, or divide both sides of an inequality by a number bigger than 0, a positive number, you are going to preserve the inequality. But if you multiply both sides by, or divide both sides by, of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality gets reversed. It does not get preserved. This is an important factor to remember. This is what distinguishes equations from inequalities. Up until now, everything was exactly the same with equations as it was for inequalities. But when you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, then Equations behave differently than inequalities. In equations, you're allowed to do that, and it preserves it. But in inequalities, when you multiply by a negative number, you have to reverse the sign. Keep that in mind. So let's take an example. 8 is smaller than 10, but 8 times negative 2 is bigger than 10 times negative 2, because negative 16 is bigger than negative 20. Similarly, if you divide 8 by negative 2, you get negative 4. And 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5, and negative 4 is bigger than negative 5. So you can see why it flips. All right, see if you can isolate the variable by undoing multiplication or division for these three problems. So go ahead and pause the video here and see what you can do for these problems. Assuming you've come back, let's start with the first one. We have 2 times x equals 5. So it's important you read out loud, because then which operation you're working with will become clear. So 2 times undoing multiplication will divide. So divide both sides by 2, and you'll get x equals 5 halves. You'll do the same thing with inequalities. And as we saw, you have to be very careful. If you're dividing by a positive number, you preserve the inequality as is. If you're dividing by a negative number, you will have to change the 
inequality to the opposite sign that it is already at. So here we have x less than 5 halves. All right, next one, you have x divided by 2 is 5. So undoing division is multiplying. So multiply both sides by 2, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1. So this way we have x equals 10. And you'll do the same for inequality. Since it's a positive number, inequality sign of greater than is preserved. So this last problem we have, we're saying negative 3 times x is 5. So to get rid of that, we'll have to divide both sides by negative 3. And we'll get x equals negative 5 thirds. On the inequality side, we'll do the exact same thing. But always remember to switch the inequality sign because we're dividing by negative number. So the only difference between solving equations and inequalities is if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to switch signs. If it's addition or subtraction, really the inequalities are preserved. So our final answer will be x greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds, even though our original problem had less than or equal to sign in it.